G'day, how you going? Ian Apolis here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my video where I want to teach you beginners and advanced beginners how to paint a beautiful rocky water sunsetting scene today. And this is something that is very doable for you beginners. And just remember, if you just started out, always going to need some practice because that's what gets us where we're going in life, okay? So the size of the canvas is up there like that. And I'll also get some colours running up the screen. This video is designed for you to watch it first and then work out what you need to get together so you can play, pause and paint along with the video and paint the same subject I'm teaching here. I want to say a big shout out thank you to Brian Beckwith for this photo we're using today so thank you very much there Brian Beckwith. We've all got our coffees and we've got our enthusiasm let's get right into it. Now I've got my horizon line above halfway right along there like that. There's my horizon line. This is going to be the water from this point to this point here. And this point here is just simply going to be the foreground of big stones and rocks. It's going to be beautiful. And about here, we're going to have a glaring sun and clouds and a beautiful wicked sky. OK, so let's get down to the palette. So on the palette here, I've got my craft white. It's a soft titanium white poster paint, and I want to mix this with some retarder just so as I can get a pretty much a primed surface ready to blend beautiful acrylic paints without them drying too quickly because the retarder slows down the drying time. So we'll start on the sky area and I just want to just simply prime that in like so with this putter on a brush. Now I call it a putter on a brush because look at that, that put it on no mucking around at all. Eh? Look at that, done. There we go. I've just wiped that putter on a brush and I want to start with Indian yellow down on the horizon line there, all right? So we'll get some of this on the tip of my putter on a brush. And straight across the horizon here, I'm going to come right across the horizon just where I want this yellow. I don't want it too high up in the sky. And I'm going to try and fade that. I'm going to wipe it and I want to try and thin that white back down into it, just so that I don't get too much green in the sky. So what I'm going to do is just stamp it on with the edge of this brush, like that. And this will pull, that, look at those darker lines in there, see? Okay, next colour I'm using is red gold or slash deep orange, just to get at the top of that yellow to put a barrier between the yellow and the blue so we don't get green in our sky. And pretty much from here, I want to get that orange and lace it through that yellow. I'm bringing it down in X strokes, just so as I'm still going to get lineal lines in there creating depth. Now I'm picking up my cerulean blue. This is going to be quite a simple sky, you'll be amazed. So coming from here, I want to put it on, bring it down. I don't want it very dark blue, I want it kind of pale. I'm getting the blue that I want there. Now I'm going to start letting it meet with that orangey colour and pull that through it slightly and gingerly and gently. Now while everything is still wet, we're going to add some clouds. Now for the clouds, we're going to need two varieties, dark and light. So I'm grabbing some of this permanent alindrin and I'm mixing it with this cerulean blue here to get that real dark vibe of a purple that I'm looking for in the distance there. Just to get it the colour, you want it that dark bluey, really dark blue colour. So we've got two cloud colours, this one and the actual white up higher in the sky. And you'll see why I'm doing this, it'll make sense later. I'll let that sit a bit. I've got the titanium white there. I'm grabbing a fan brush, simply loading this up chiseling it onto the fan brush and I want some white clouds in the sky just some whispery cirrus clouds so I'm going to put them on like that these are going to be kind of dragged like this long lineal across the painting like that now grab yourself a cloth and a blending brush and you want to sit this stuff down this cirrus cloud like that now Okay, stop, look what's on me brush. Okay, I want to wipe that just so as I'm controlling what's happening with this cirrus cloud. Watch here, I want to pull like that. See how soft 
and gentle they look in the sky. That's all these clouds are. They're soft, gentle little clouds in the sky and just play with them and see what you can make from them. And what you do, you, you blend it, have a sticky beak, have a peekaboo at it and see what's happening. Pull it, wipe your brush, it's just constant. It's a matter of that. This is a procedure in itself. You need to practice and learn as you're becoming an artist in your journey of art, okay? And you can see just how they're looking like cirrus clouds in the sky. Now I've grabbed a little bit of that Indian yellow and tainted some of that white. So I want some of these let's say here big vibrant one there coming out pick up some more coming into lineal ones like that stop grab your blending brush now if you've got too much blue in it change blending brushes now I want to blend this like that like that look what I'm doing pretty much just the corner of the brush I'm using. And I'm dancing, pulling, taking my time. I'm not just mechanically grinding in one spot and moving along and hoping for the best. You gotta make it the best. And I wanna get this over there, pull. There we go. Mainly over here, so I'll stamp one on there like that and we'll get something down here. Lineal in there, it's gonna create depth and wonder. What I mean by depth and wonder, see that line that I put there? I'll grab this brush on its edge and pull that nice and skinny in there. There you go, see what that done? Some of this is all over the place. Okay, we are getting bits of cloud within our sky there. So we're coming out here now. I'm gonna go like that. You can see what I'm doing, can't you? I'm making a array, array of clouds coming out. Now this is a one and a half inch brush. You can use a smaller one or use just part of a larger brush to blend and control your blends. Now this next bit is gonna be a real fun part to do. We're gonna put a nice white intense bit in the middle of the painting there. So I'm cleaning up my fan brush, hog bristle fan brush, and I'm picking up titanium white again. I don't want any dirty white, and we have gotta stamp this on until it gets dirty. Then we don't wanna keep stamping it on. So what I'm gonna do is put a glare right here. I'm starting in the middle, okay, this glare. It's white, it's white, it's bright, it's white. Turn the brush around, it's white and bright. Okay, and I want this to be glary. I'm kind of doing an oval shape, if you can kind of pick that up. Okay, I'll put that down. That brush is filthy. I've got another blending brush, and I want to come just from the, the middle, stamp it there so you've got all that color on the brush. Okay, we've got all that the way we wanted. I'm gonna wipe that off that brush now. Look at that, eh? You don't wanna put that everywhere. And then we'll come to the edge and soften this out, okay? We're gonna soften our glare. Up the top there and around this side here. There we go. And now we're gonna put some more glare. We're gonna start again. So I've picked up some more white, pure white, and I wanna start in the middle again, getting that intense white value there. And at the ends here, it can fade into yellow. There we go. Grab your blending brush. And now I just wanna sit the middle down. It's gonna stay a little bit brighter. Wipe it, and then Soften these edges up, okay? Just gingerly play with it with the corner of the brush. Just so as it's sitting it down. Now, I've cleaned that fan brush and I've loaded it up again. Now this bit of cloud here, I want nice and bright as well. Right above it, right here, right above it. I'm just gonna paint it on with this. 
That'll do, like that. Like that. And we'll get some of this radiating out. Radiating out. It's not too dirty. So look at that, so I can pick up more white paint. And I'm going to, where I can intensify this, and I would like to get some, just some subtle white bits of this coming out into that orangey bit as well. Just like that, it's just adding bullshit and wow factor to your sun. You can do this if you know what to do. It's not that hard, okay? And we can probably, over here if you want, find little bits that might need some yumminess. Just little bits here. Not too much, don't overdo it. It's quite easy to get carried away. <clears throat> there we go, I'm just adding little lighter bits to there, some yumminess and stop now before you get carried away again. Now this other colour we mixed here, we're gonna put this all along the horizon line, okay? Just so you know where my horizon line is, I've gone and put some tape there. So I'll start over here, is that sticking? And I wanna scratch this through to a degree, all right, so the sky is still wet. It's gonna come very narrow here underneath the sun these are different clouds now within your setting sky and I'm doing this because rubbing it in like this because the colors that are on there because it's wet it's allowing it to not be so bright and loud and these clouds are pretty much here and then they I'm going to use this little brush that I'm putting it on with just to pretty much blend them into the sky as well so up there like that all the way along here, boom, 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 and blend it in like so. Now also what I want to do is grab some, just slightly, well not too much on your brush, just slightly bits of it coming up here. Now you're not going to ruin it, you're just adding real value to this sky. Bits of it in there like that. Just adding real value to your sky. We'll bring this up a bit, just so as we can fade it. See this paint here, this, this color here, it's still rubbery and wet, and it's allowing this color to smear into it, creating that beautiful whispering effect that you want within your skies. Just blending this up, whatever. And when I take that tape off, it's gonna look okay. Stamp this on and pretty much make something over this side as well with some clouds. We might have a little bit coming through there. That's it. And we'll get this whispered down. Gingerly tapered down. Totally different to the clouds up the top there. Now I've just scraped the littlest of that red gold slash orange on there because where I just want the littlest band of this just in, in bits and parts here, just showing the intensity of that sun setting behind these silhouetted clouds. And this is just another real color value we're adding to the painting. Well, I think I've pretty much finished that sky. I can muck with that till the cows come home, but I want to peel this tape off because we're going to get our water right under here, right against those dark clouds there. So I'm going to give this a bit of a dry just so I can mask that up. All right, I've given this horizon area a bit of a dry just so as we can map in the water bit before we get to the rocks. We're pretty much nearly halfway there, all right? So we're gonna use the same craft white with a little bit of retarder, and we're gonna put our watercolors on top of that. Okay, so I'm gonna grab the putter on a brush. There's not a lot of blending here, so I know this doesn't have as much retarder in it as what the sky color half did, okay? Get this to the horizon line, like so. 
pushing it on. Now I dried it because I was going to put some masking tape there. So let's put some masking tape there before we get too carried away. So we got our masking tape on there. Now I've got my cerulean blue. I want to grab that, most of it, and make a bit of a grey cerulean blue. So I've got some mid-tone grey and I'm mixing that to get that grey blue value for the watercolour, okay? And this is going to come right across the water here like that. Bang, bring it down to that bottom area there. Beautiful. Pick up some more if you need it. Some of this darker colour here, I want to pick some of that up and I want to create some darker bands within me water. So about there and something about there. Oh, look at that big blob there, right? Eh? There we go. And something maybe there like that. I've got a big ton of paint on there, but that's all right. Now wipe that up the side there like that and pull that across and waterfy it. See how we just waterfied that and we got those bands there. Now don't rub them away. Otherwise you've got to start all over again. Now we need some glare in the water. Using, I've got two bits of white. This first bit of white, I want to mix with a bit of the Indian yellow. There we go. Whoa, not too much. And some of this red gold. So we've made that kind of um, Jaffa colour there. And we just want to stamp this on and water it into the water before we put the actual white. So there's my son there. Stamping along like this. There's my son there. There's I'll come to that dot. That's the point I want to come down to, okay? Coming like a funnel, if anything, just like that. Boom, see what's happening? Could probably put a bit more of a glow there if we want. Now grab a brush and simply water fire that. So we're gonna right across the canvas like that. Sink it down a little bit more because this is just there, it's not heavy. Now I'm grabbing another clean brush with the titanium white and we're going to sit this on there. Mainly where the intensity of it all is, right out here. Now we don't want to overdo this where we start turning all this into mud. We want it to actually be seen for what it is, okay? And this is going to simply come down the water like so, just like that, maybe a little bit more of a glistening bit there, okay? And that's our intense area of the white. Clean your putter on a brush that you waterfied the orangey colour with, and we're going to simply do the same with that now. Done. Don't touch it. Over there, you can see I've got this little bit here. So what I'll do is I'll just push that inwards and get rid of it. Done. It's taken away. Now, before we do finish, we can put some shimmer on there if we want to. So I'm grabbing my flat toothbrush. I've put a bit of this colour in that white, just so it's not pure white, coming into the water and pulling that onto the tip of my toothbrush, OK? And this is going to be, try not to get big dots. Control how you spray this. Practice it before you put it into a painting. And what I'm going to do is just flicker some white on that bit there. Just to intensify this bit here with some white flicker. Hopefully it'll stand out. It's very minimal, but there, yeah, that'll do it. Don't overdo it. Let's take that tape off. Now see how the, see this cloud colour? I'm going to fix that back down to the horizon line. So using my mouse stick, just leaning on my mouse stick, grabbing that paint and then using a flat brush and just cutting back those white bleeding marks that came up from the water. That's if you get these. If you get these, this is how I'm fixing mine up. And then just blend that back into your cloud there softly so it doesn't look like a big patch up job. And you can see from this side to that side how you've improved the mistake or the mishap that happened. Now we're ready to put in the stones, rocks and pebbles. To block in these stone rock pebbles, I'm grabbing the quinacridone magenta and the 
cerulean blue just to get this purple color. Now I want a quite deep purple. So I would add more of this to get the desired flavor. Now I don't want it red purple, I want it the blue flavor. I've got that the value that I want, but I want a couple of values of this. I want a light, medium and dark value of this. I'll put some phalo blue here and I've just, whatever's in the brush, I'm mixing that up. And I even feel I want a bit of, a bit darker again. So I'm going for some dioxine purple down here just to make this darker value. Oh, there we go, beautiful. Now let's use this to map it in. So we're gonna just simply map this in with this dioxine purple, get it up to that water area first. So this is the darker value. Okay, you got that up to the top there. Now grab yourself a filbert, same paint, and you'll wanna start creating the top now where it's over the water. So what I'm gonna do is just create stones here and there, little, little round bits, bigger round bits, but I want them quite sharp. This brush is not the best, it's munted up a bit, but there we go. Got little ones, big ones. If anything, I'm making the edges a bit rounder, okay? There we go. Now I've dried that, that's my darkest color. I wanna start adding the rocks coming from the darker color and gradually getting to a tone lighter. So this first color we mixed here, I'm gonna use this. See where your rocks are. Don't go leaving a dark edge on the top. You want the dark edge covered with these rocks. Wherever they are. There's little ones, and this is gonna create stones, rocks, and everything like so in front of each other, this color here. Can you see what's happening? You don't want a dark color around the edge. And just make your, I'll use this just to get the top bits manufactured the way I want them. And then I'll go back to that filbert because that filbert was doing some quite good work down there. So I'll come here in front like that, just covering the dark bits up. That's important because it gives you your painting that value and the vibe that you're looking for. You don't know what you're looking for, but when you see it, you find it. You know what I mean? Shoved in there, big stones. With the highlighted colour that I'm going to put on it, I will create the larger and smaller stones with that. Okay, we've done that colour. So see the first dark colour I put on there? That's made up all the depth within that. Now we're going to highlight this colour. We'll just dry that first. So I've dried those stones. Now the, this is the colour we use. I'm going to grab a bit more white now and just gradually tint it to the value I want. And see the white's gonna pull through those red values as well. So this is where you start making your different size stones, watch. I'll put a little one there, a little one there, a little one there. See there's a few little ones all the way out there. This is making them now. Different sizes. Just cover that top dark area. You don't want that dark. You want, that's the light hitting it. And then watch this, hang on. I'll just do a section here. And then we can start making bigger ones. See, we've got, and you can also have lots of little ones within the bigger ones. Let's say like, I'm only gonna, I've got to go to back to the filbert brush, the big filbert brush for there, because I just want this one for mainly out there. Now I'm done all the top area. 
I'm back to the filbert again so we can get some of these just highlighted in there. And this, it's not realism here, but don't try and go for realism. That's what catches a lot of beginners out. They're trying to get it too perfect. Just get that style going in there. I'll put a big one there. Now I've given that a dry. Now this paint that I'm using, I want to get it a bit more blue. So let's grab a bit more blue in this bit here, just to create different values within there, okay? So we'll mix that up. And periodically, here and there-ish, I wanna try and get some blue shade within there as well. Just not everywhere, just sort of, is that the right word, periodically? I want the slider, see here, I want the slightest of this yellowy, whitey colour just hitting some of the tops of these rocks. So down here we've got this white that we mixed before. Let's grab some of this colour here and we pretty much need to mix that with some white. But we want a lot of white. We don't want it orange, we want it tainted white from that colour. So I'll grab some of this here. And I just want to slightly have some of these hitting with the light around here. Just a little bit, not too much. And this side as well. Now grabbing this colour here, I want to grab a bit of white just to tint some of this and we'll just do our final highlights. So let's get some rocks. I'm finding the left side of the rock and the top. That's what I'm doing on certain rocks. The left side of the rock and the top. See? The left side of the rock and the top. There's another one here, sort of. Let's make a big one there, kind of. Put something here. So I'm going to go beside it. The last thing I want to do, because it's pretty much the one value, I want to put a sense of this way, looking at it kind of way. So I want to get some of this stuff and get it really dark. So this dark colour that we had, let's grab a little bit of dioxine purple and really darken that up there. And we just simply want to darken the bottom front area of these rocks. So say like, let's come... Where's a rock here? Here's a, here's a rock here, look, boom. This one here. Find your big rocks and come from the bottom and darken some of them up. Here's another one here. This one here can come around there. And just little bits way out in the foreground there. You can have just some little deliberate dark bits out here. See where it's all light? But that's it. Okay, we've pretty much done what we can there. I'll just grab a lighter value of the paint here, just something I can sign the painting, and then we can whack a frame on it. So I want to thank all my subscribers who support my channel. A big shout out and thank you to my patrons who support me every month. If you want to be a patron and get the extras they get behind the scenes and early releases, hit the patron link below and become a patron. There we go, we'll whack a frame on that. There you go, that is not too shabby. A stony shored sunset vibe of a painting. You can even put an old dead bit of driftwood sticking up here, whatever you fancy. Like I said, make it your own. But you know what? I know you can do it. And I had fun doing that. Colourful, beautiful, lovely subject there. Be sure to check out my links in the description below. Share, like, and subscribe. And if you like what I'm doing, you tell your friends. But if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody, okay?
Goodbye, good luck, and good on you.